What Douglas is saying is that AMPs are fundamentally part of the problem of tokenization and of accumulation, <laughs> right? I, I don't know that uh, decentralized platform is going to be the, the cure for that, right? It's, uh, it's just um, a complete reframing of how we look at, at life at large. Right. So, so Douglas, are you suggesting that uh, decentralized mechanism, like the one that we offer, is is uh, an opportunity to do this type of re-education? So, I'm, I'm not seeing the, the path to that just just with new tools, right? Because if if anything, it just makes um, numbering anything a bit easier. Right. Everything has to can be much more finely uh, portioned out. Uh, all of the measurements are just there in front of you. Everything you do can be measured so quickly, so easily. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that there are many people that look to new technologies and platforms for their capacity to somehow make them rich. You know, <laughs> and that's the current the current cultural mindset is that oh, is this a better a better means to that end? And it's a different end that we're talking about. And yeah, there's a place, as you know, there's a place for advertisers and corporations on here to do tasks they've done before. But it's a, it's a fundamentally different operating system that you're talking about. It's the one that we had in, you know, 1988 and 1990 for what the peer to peer network society would be or what Burning Man saw or what Occupy saw. You know, there's, and, and, uh, it's just the, the way you communicate this is going to be, I, as important as uh, as the way the platform functions. Yeah, we're creating a new a new operating system for the internet here. So the, the, there is one thing in the network which which does um, take a bit of the edge out of just accumulating, uh, and that's the reputation mechanism. I, I'm sorry I couldn't. Uh, uh, participate in this chat for, for most of the time that it went on. Uh, so I don't know if you've spoken about it, but the, the reputation mechanism is actually in place in many ways to balance uh, the monetary power, right? So so if we if you take a look at the white paper, we actually have a nice exploration of that right at the beginning, where we uh, go and discuss the notion of Rio as something that balances um, amps in the system. So right now, essentially, money equates into how much noise you can make, right? That's, that's a, a, very, um, a very correlated, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, you, you understand what I'm saying, more money, more voice. And in the system, there's marginal utility to amps in that <laughs> you can only throw so much at a message before throwing more makes it less efficient or less uh, beneficial in terms of getting your message out there than it would be to work on creating a reputation of someone who creates valuable content. And either way, it's always directed only at those who are initially interested in what you have to say or, to, or who know you in some way. So, so in that, it is an attempt to weaken the power of just accumulating more and more because there's, there's a very uh, hard-coded limit or a very, uh, very finely defined marginal utility of this power. But bottom line, Rio, this reputation measure, is also a number, right? It's not something that you can accumulate completely. It does uh, um, an asymptotic relationship to its growth compared to, to uh, the attention that you receive, to the appreciation that your content gets in the network. But it's still some, some uh, you know, a, a game of tokens in a similar way to what you described, right? We have to get more of this. You have to get more Rio, and then you can get more amps. And when you get more amps, you can get more... Blah, 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 blah. So I'm, I'm curious if, if, you, if you think, I mean, I'm, I'm from the school of thought uh, where you can't, saying that you can't really educate people with ideas, you can't really change their minds just by saying, you know, guys, if you think this way, it's probably going to be better for everyone. But rather, uh, in the school of thought, I, I think, um, very nicely encapsulated in what uh, Buckminster Fuller said, you know, you can't, and I'm sure you know that one, right? You can't change people's minds, you only create the tools that allow them to, to create new mental models, to create new ways of thinking. And so I was wondering, well, first of all, which school you uh, um, uh, ascribe yourself to, and, and assuming it's the second one, or even if it's the, the first one, but you have any advice for us about how to build tools 
uh, that do push us towards less of this, uh, this issue that you describe about the tokenization of everything, what sort of tool would you build? What sort of, um, what sort of device or what sort of technology do you think would make sense? What would be the next step towards that? Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I'm not talking about uh, uh, giving classes, you know, to people so that they're ready to come into this world, but that you are precise and deliberate with the signs that you use. So the, for most people, when they go into a world that has some kind of money or coin or thing in it, it triggers a, a very well embedded gamified sensibility about what money is, right? And your amps are something different than that. It's not gold. You know, it's something, it's some, I'm not, I don't want to accumulate amps to go buy a guitar. You know, I'm doing something else here. I am, I am uh, uh, creating the, the, I'm creating the current for society to run. You know, and it's a it's a collective process. So uh, I'm just thinking that that unless there's enough people on the platform who understand the values, and, and we thought there were in the early internet days, that don't worry, there's a critical mass of us. So even when they come on, it won't get commercial. They're never going to put ads on this thing. We really, we all thought Amazon would fail because there was no commerce on the net. We thought it was anchored too strongly the other way. You know, so that's all I'm saying is that you, you guys are, and I don't know enough about the platform yet, and I'll try to learn, but you guys are in the same position as the original architects of the internet were back when. And one of the main problems they, one of their main mistakes was underestimating how well embedded certain behavioral tropes are. And one of the ways to avoid that is particularly in a system like this, where you're talking, where, where you are, maybe you won't, maybe as Jim says, you won't, you won't talk to the public about this, but once there's a currency and a blockchain and a crypto thing, it sounds like, oh, here's another one of those. And let's go in there and I'm going to get in early and make some messages and I'll get Coke to let me sponsor their thing. And then I'm going to get lots of amps and, oh, I'm going to be the influencer and then I'll get a TV show. Um, that's how kids see the net. You know what I mean? And this is a much bigger deal is all I'm saying. So, so there's got to be ways to, to in, the, in the UX of this platform and the language around it, there's probably ways to mitigate that response is all I'm thinking. So I, I, I'd really like to know, Douglas, if you think there's one specific or, or a few specific mistakes that, that um, you know, the, the so-called creators of the internet made or the first communities on the internet made that, that if, if handled differently would prevent or at least alleviate some of these issues for the people coming in later on? They called me the de devil when I said, said that someday the internet would be funded by advertising. Okay, you know they, you know they couldn't believe it. We had it then. Uh, Jim, Jim, let's 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 let our guest uh, say that. Uh, well. I'm leaving someone else on the sitting there waiting for me. To, I'm supposed to be doing some interview. Um, uh, one, of, I mean, this is these are our pie in the sky. Okay, um, one of them was not doing two-way linking, but doing one-way linking. So if we had two-way linking the way Ted Nelson was thinking about it. You know, there would be all sorts of credit we could we could arrange. There'd be privacy issues, um, but um, two was uh, uh, ICANN was sort of ill conceived as a as as a body, um, and I, I I still feel like the the focus on speeds and feeds over access. You know, I would have preferred we get the whole world on a text-based internet first and then turn it into the fucking Netflix bullshit TV thing that it is today um, rather than make it TV and then hope that, you know, people get, and get online. And when people get online with these devices, which is how they are, that's not, they're, not, they're not part of the productive digital world. They're part of the receive-only television world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's just an extension of the consumerist market. Yeah, which is a which to me is a problem in a world where we need to uh, distribute value creation. You know, people think that what I'm saying that I'm some kind of socialist wanting to redistribute the spoils of capitalism mm -hmm. after the fact, and I'm not. I'm trying to pre-distribute the means of production 
before the fact. Um, and that's when you get your revolution. Um, well, so the way we're know, distributing value is we have an AMP for attention. We have an ETH for computation on the blockchain. We have Divi dollars for our Divi collaboration. Uh, and there will be thousands of these currencies and it won't be, it won't impede a person. They won't see the trades underneath going on. They, they won't have any idea there's a currency beyond this, behind it. That is engineered for the social good that we want to build into the coin. A Divi token, a Divi token, for example, represents a proof of cooperation.